Hello, I'm Seema and thank you for returning for part 2 of the videos titled Orbitals and Quantum Numbers. In the previous video, I taught you about the first two quantum numbers, that is the principal quantum number, n, which tells us about the shell, and the azimuthal quantum number, that is l, which tells us about the subshell. Then I told you that from the value of n, it is possible to calculate the value of l. For any value of n, the number of values of l range from 0 to n minus 1. The number of values actually is the same, but since the first value is 0, the last value has to be one number less than the number of the shell. Then I also told you that depending on the value of L, whatever if the value of L is 0, that subshell is known as the S subshell. If the value is 1, the subshell is called the P subshell. If it's 2, it is D and 4 is F. Uh, sorry, 3 is F and 4 is G and 5 is H. We now come to the third quantum number, which is the magnetic quantum number. Moving back to the analogy of, a, of an apartment building, the different floors of an apartment building, they are the shells, that is, they are the principal quantum number. The different apartments present in, on each floor would then be the value of L, that is the azimuthal quantum number. And now, once you know about the apartments, you would like to know the different rooms in each apartment. Each room forms an orbital. So in an apartment building, every individual room would be an orbital. So the magnetic quantum number takes us to the orbitals, that how many orbitals are present in each subshell. Let us see how do we calculate. The number of rooms in, a, in an apartment can be calculated from its value of L. How? If the value, whatever is the value of L, the number of values or number of rooms or orbitals in it would be plus minus L plus 1. The value would be plus minus whatever is the value of L and in addition to it one more uh, number and that one is actually the digit 0. In other words, you could say that if the value of L is 0, then ML would be plus minus 0 is 0 plus 1 would be 1 value and that first value is 0. If L is 1, then the value of plus 1 plus minus L would be from plus to minus L or rather from minus L to plus L, all the values including 0. So it would be minus 1 and this plus 1 value is 0, so it will be 0 and plus 1. If L is 2, then the values of M would be minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2. Now, do you see, if, the, if this is the subshell, it has only one room or this is the apartment. All apartments with the S type are, have only one room. All apartments which are of the P type have three rooms. Apartments of B type have five rooms. Apartments of F type have seven rooms. G is nine and H is 11. And how do you calculate these rooms? From this formula, that whatever is the number of L plus minus that value and zero. So from minus integer to the positive integer, the same number and the value of zero in between, sorry, this one. The, this would have five by minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two. So it has five rooms. This apartment is three. So it would have minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, plus one, plus two, plus three. So it has seven rooms. So that is how you come to the orbitals. The M uh, quantum number gives us the number of orbitals. I told you we use quantum numbers to arrive at an electron in an atom. So we have now arrived at the smallest uh, possible division in, in the atom from shells to subshells to the particular orbital. So we have reached the room in which there are only two possible occupants. Every orbital can have only two electrons. So each room in the apartment building can have only two people. Now, since both of them are identical, how would you tell them apart? 
they also have some difference between the two of them and how do we that is told to us by the fourth quantum number which is known as the spin quantum number or the spin angular momentum quantum number these two electrons they have to uh, be a little different and how do we know which one is different so they the two of them they stand together and they decide okay if someone comes for me how would he know it's me and it's not you because we look alike so the electrons decide okay i will turn this way i will just uh, go around my axis in the clockwise direction so the other electron decides all right i'll go in the anti-clockwise direction so that's the difference if you have you are looking for an electron you know which shell is it in is it in the first shell second shell third shell you know the shell then you know which okay it is in this shell which which sub shell is it in it's in the p sub shell all right if it's in the p sub shell the p sub shell has three orbitals or three rooms in that apartment out of these which one is it it is this one all right one of the p orbitals we'll go into the details in the next video it is in this room so once you reach the room also which electron is it if it is a clockwise then it has one value if it's going around in the anti-clockwise direction then it has another value these two values are represented by plus half or minus half or they are shown by a pair of arrows one moving upwards and one moving downwards so which out of these is it the upward one or is it the downward one so by the use of these four quantum numbers we can actually reach the electron so it is the address of every electron in an atom and that is why the quantum mechanical model is so liked and accepted do you know that even the periodic table of elements has been prepared keeping in mind these subshells and the orbitals these two are the rows of elements in which the s orbitals are being filled up outermost these are the p orbitals these here are the d orbitals and at the bottom you have 14 elements which are the f orbitals 2s and how many p 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 p 10 d and 14 f what is the reason for this let us see how i told you in the periodic table there are 2 p 6 sorry 2 s 6 p rows 10 d rows and 14 f rows we know that every orbital s orbitals have only one orbital and every orbital can have only two electrons so there are only two rows in which s has the first electron and the second electron if there are p orbitals there are only three p orbitals so there can be only six electrons in the three p orbitals and according to that we have only six rows of the p elements then in d orbitals there are five orbitals and therefore you can have 10 electrons and therefore we have 10 lines or 10 rows of d block elements and f block elements they can, there are seven orbitals they can have 14 electrons and hence we have 14 uh, rows of the f block elements so the entire periodic table has been prepared on the basis of this quantum mechanical model of an atom that is how important it is it formed the basic backbone of our study of the properties and behaviors of elements in chemistry so this with the knowledge of the quantum mechanical model of an atom and the periodic table of elements you can simply deduce in your mind just knowing the configurations how an element would behave in a chemical reaction interesting isn't it chemistry is really very interesting if you liked my video please uh, put a like down here subscribe to my channel and keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching.